This video is to share information about the Commission's rules about real-time text, or RTT. I will share details of its history, current changes, RTT features, and the expected timeline of implementation. First, some background. Since the 1970s, text telephone, or TTY, technology was the only means for individuals who are deaf, hard of hearing, or speech disabled to send and receive text communications over the Public Switched Telephone Network, or PSTN. The Commission's rules have required providers and device manufacturers of telecommunication services and Advanced Communication Services, or ACS, including Interconnected Voice Over Internet Protocol, or VOIP, providers support TTY technology. However, changes to communication networks, particularly ongoing technology transitions from circuit switched to internet protocol or IP-based networks, and from copper to wireless and fiber infrastructure, have affected the quality and utility of TTY technology. These changes present significant challenges to effective communication, including drop-offs on calls and garbling. Further, TTY technology has a limited character set and often requires a separate, standalone device. These limitations have resulted in a steady decline in TTY use in favor of other forms of text communications. The Commission recognized the need for a superior accessibility solution, real-time text, which is more reliable than TTY technology for modern IP-based networks. Real-time text, or RTT, is a technology that allows text to be sent immediately as it is created through wireless handsets that use IP-based technology on networks that support RTT. With RTT, there is no need to press a send key as there generally is for SMS, chat, or other types of texting. Rather, the recipient of the message can read the message as soon as the sender types it. RTT can eliminate the need to purchase specialized devices such as TTYs to send text in real time over wireless phones. Wireless service providers and manufacturers of wireless handsets which are required to support TTY technology can now use RTT as they migrate to internet protocol-based technology. RTT calling features. Interoperability. RTT callers must be able to call each other regardless of device or network used. Backward compatibility with TTY technology. To ensure that RTT users and TTY users can continue to communicate directly with one another until TTYs are phased out, RTT must be backwards compatible with TTYs. You will be able to use RTT to call TTY users, including individuals, businesses, and governmental agencies. Support for 911 communications. Covered services and equipment must enable the caller to transmit and receive RTT communications to and from any 911 PSAP in the United States. Calls made via RTT are subject to the same location information requirements as calls made via TTY. Capability to initiate and receive calls using RTT. Covered services and equipment must enable the caller to initiate and receive calls to and from the same telephone numbers for which voice calls can be initiated and received. Simultaneous voice and text. Covered services and equipment must enable the caller to send and receive text and voice simultaneously in both directions on the same call using a single device. For example, if I am speaking and the person on the other side of the call is typing using RTT, 
or vice versa, it does not matter. It allows options for me and for other callers. Alert indicators. In order to alert callers to incoming calls and audio activity on an RTT call, device manufacturers and service providers are encouraged to incorporate accessible indicators for RTT purposes. Latency and error rate of text transmittal. Text characters should be transmitted in a manner that is functionally equivalent to the real-time nature of voice telephone communications by appearing on the receiving device at roughly the same time it is created on the sending device. RTT is on by default. The Commission strongly encourages RTT to be pre-installed and accessed through a default function on covered devices to expedite effective RTT implementation. Calling features. No calling features are mandated at this time, but are strongly encouraged. For instance, certain calling features that are commonly available to voice telephone users, including the ability to transfer calls, enable multi-party teleconferencing, and utilize the automated attendant interactive voice response systems, and caller identification features are necessary to ensure that RTT is as accessible, usable, and effective for people with disabilities as wireless voice communication service is for people without disabilities. Further, the ability for the caller to control text settings, such as font size and color, may help accommodate people who are visually impaired. Timelines for availability of RTT services and RTT capable devices. Companies that choose to provide RTT services instead of supporting TTYs over their wireless IP networks must follow the following timelines. Wireless providers, December 31, 2017. Companies that provide wireless services nationwide, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, must either make a downloadable RTT application or plugin available, or implement changes to their networks to support RTT and offer at least one RTT-capable handset. Nationwide carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, must support RTT on all of their new wireless devices, December 31st, 2019. Companies that provide wireless services locally or regionally, but not nationwide, must either make a downloadable RTT application or plug-in available or implement changes to their networks to support RTT and offer at least one RTT capable handset by June 30th, 2020. Local and regional providers, including resellers, must support RTT on all of their new wireless devices by June 30th, 2021.
wireless equipment manufacturers, manufacturers of handsets for use with wireless IP-based voice services must implement RTT in all handsets manufactured after December 31st, 2018. Over the next year or two, some wireless service providers and manufacturers will begin to support RTT. When purchasing a new wireless handset, you should check to see whether it is RTT capable and when your service provider intends to support RTT on its network. In the meantime, some carriers have been waived from the requirement to support TTY on wireless IP networks, including calls to 911, subject to the following conditions. Carriers must notify consumers that their IP-based wireless services will not support TTY technology for calls to 911. Carriers must provide consumers with information about alternative text-based accessibility solutions. Carriers must file periodic progress reports on their development of RTT with the Commission. Unresolved Issues the FCC is reviewing comments about a timeline to sunset its requirement for RTT to be backward compatible with TTY. Integration of RTT into telecommunications relay service operations and real-time text features that may be needed for people with cognitive disabilities and people who are deafblind. The FCC will keep you informed when the rules about these issues are finalized. The comment period is already closed, but the FCC may accept late filings. You may file a comment at www.fcc.gov ecfs on this docket, GN docket number 15-178. Filing a complaint. The FCC is updating its Consumer Complaint Center to permit individuals to file complaints online concerning our rules governing TTY and RTT access to wireless services. At this time, if you have a problem with such access, you may file a complaint or ask for assistance by letter, phone, fax, or email. Federal Communications Commission, Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau, Consumer Inquiries and Complaints Division, 445 12th Street Southwest, Washington, D.C. 20554, phone number 1-888-225-5322, TTY number 1-888-835-5322, video phone number 1-844-432-2272, Fax number 202-418-0037 or email dro at fcc.gov. Your complaint should include the following information, if available. Your name, address, and other contact information, such as telephone number and email address. The name and contact information of the device manufacturer or wireless carrier. Information about the device or software used, the date or dates that you purchased, acquired, or used, or tried to purchase, acquire, or use the device. A description of the accessibility problem and what you would like done to solve the accessibility problem. How you would like the FCC to respond to you, such as by email, letter, or telephone and any additional information you think is appropriate. For more information about RTT, 
or to learn more about FCC programs that promote access to communication services for people with disabilities, visit the FCC's Disability Rights Office website at www.fcc.gov disability. And thank you for watching.